so in, in the interest of time, I will proceed. I, this is my presentation. I apologize uh, in advance for the heavy content uh, 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 charge presentation so far, but after my presentation, we're going to have yoga and I, hopefully that will relax uh, everyone uh, back to the baseline uh, that we were before. So I'm going to share my screen and with my presentation. And um, so, so my job here today is, is really just to uh, talk about some of the new things uh, that have come up in the treatment of melanoma uh, recently. Uh, I'm gonna run, go through these slides somewhat quickly. So hopefully we can catch up on time, but oops, I'm having trouble actually. Let's try there. Okay. All right. This is just looking at the melanoma landscape over time. And uh, uh, many of you don't know, but in the 80s, this was really the dark ages of uh, treatment of melanoma, where we really didn't have a lot of effective treatments. Uh, some of the treatments that were effective, like high dose IL-2, were effected, effective only for a small number of patients. But it, as you can see, since immunotherapy was approved in mid-2011, there's been a, a lot of new therapies uh, that have been approved, uh, immunotherapy, targeted therapy, and more recently, combinations of immunotherapy and targeted therapy. Um, and, and this is um, a, 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 a clinical trial that showed that immunotherapy uh, alone or in combination uh, was quite effective in uh, keeping patients alive. And uh, this is data from uh, five years showing that 50% uh, of the patients were alive at five years, which uh, is still not satisfactory, but it's 10 times better than what we used to have in the future. And this is the data that is being presented at this year's ASCO. Now we have six and a half year uh, follow-up and we're still at 50% uh, uh, showing that these remissions are very durable. Uh, this is looking at the same sort of data for targeted therapy. And here we can see that uh, you know, the curves tend to continue to fall, although there may be a little bit of a plateau here. Um, the uh, five-year survivals are, are not as um, uh, good as they are with immunotherapy, uh, but um, hopefully with combinations, we'll be able to correct that. So very quickly, in terms of uh, treatments for patients that are at high risk of developing a recurrent melanoma, this is sort of the history. Uh, we used to use a lot of interferon, either high dose or pegylated interferon. Then etalimumab was approved. Uh, and currently, these are the standard of care options for patients that are, are at high risk of recurrence, nivolumab, pembrolizumab, or if they have a BRAF, V600E or K mutation, uh, the combination of trametinib and the brafinib is approved for prevention of recurrence. Now, uh, I just wanted to show this. This is what's called the immunologic synapse. On the one side is the tumor, on the other side is the T cell, and all of these are all the interactions related to the immune system that occur between these two types of cells. And uh, I just uh, wanted to show this because uh, we only uh, touched a very small portion of these interactions, which are the CTLA-4 um, uh, and the PD-1 interactions. Now, there are many other checkpoints, uh, as these are called, that are being investigated. And one that may actually come to the clinical arena very soon is this um, a checkpoint called LAG3. And, and the reason I say that is because this was recently reported in the media and uh, has been presented at ASCO this year about this uh, phase two, three trial with this uh, drug that inhibits this checkpoint leg three, uh, the name is relatlinumab. And in this trial, uh, it was shown that in patients who were never treated uh, uh, and they were assigned to either receive nivolumab alone or nivolumab plus relatlinumab, there was more than a doubling of the progression-free survival. So 
this is very exciting. Uh, and uh, hopefully this drug will make itself into the clinical arena soon. Importantly is that the uh, toxicity was a little higher in the combination, um, but not as high as the toxicity that we see sometimes uh, with some other combinations. So the idea here is to keep the efficacy and decrease the toxicity of these immunotherapy combinations. Another area that is gaining a lot of traction is the area of neoadjuvant immunotherapy or targeted therapy for that matter. Neoadjuvant means treating patients that are at high risk or that have uh, large tumors before you do the surgery. So these are patients that will normally get surgery and then get preventative or adjuvant treatment. And what we're doing now is treating them before the surgery. Uh, and here are some of the trials. What I want to call your attention to here is what we call the pathologic complete response rate. This is uh, after the tumors are treated and they go in and do the surgery that they were supposed to have anyway, uh, this percentage of patients don't have any tumor left. Uh, and here are some of the newer ones. This is 50% here. And even this trial um, in which uh, up to 80% of the patients didn't have any tumor after the treatment. And what does that mean? It means that if there is no tumor after the treatment, when they go in for surgery, maybe that will translate in better outcomes, better survival. And there is some preliminary data that that actually may be the case. So stay tuned for neoadjuvant uh, immunotherapy or targeted therapy coming to the, to the front, to the clinical arena. It's not standard treatment yet, uh, but there are lots of clinical trials that are looking at it. The one other new thing that has actually been approved is combination of uh, immunotherapy with targeted therapy. And this is the trial that led to that approval. The drugs here were tezolizumab, which is a PD-1, inhibitor and bemirathamib and combinitinib, it did show an improvement in progression-free survival uh, from, and, and the median duration of response were longer from 12.6 months to 12.21 months. Uh, not a striking change. There's also uh, uh, additional toxicities when you use a combination therapy. Uh, it is available, has not been adopted widely yet, but we'll have to uh, keep that in mind when we're making decisions about uh, treatment. Um, as you all may know, there, is, there are drugs called oncolytic viruses. One of them called TVAC or Imlijic is approved for use in patients that have localized disease. And these are viruses that are injected directly into the tumor. And what it does is the tumor is oncolytic, which means it destroys, tumors, it destroys uh, tumor cells. So the tumor cells are destroyed and they release antigen as shown here. And, and uh, as Janelle explained before, these antigens are picked up by uh, uh, antigen presenting cells or APC cells that show this to the immune cells and the immune cells become activated and they go back and kill additional tumor cells, which release more antigens. And the cycle uh, is um, then, then becomes um, more prevalent and uh, leads to additional uh, tumor cell killing. So this is approved, but uh, there are combinations of these oncolytic viruses with uh, um, uh, immunotherapy. And, and this is one of the trials. And in case you're not familiar with these graphs, uh, everything that's below this line here means a decrease in the size of the tumor. Everything that is above means an increase. So some of these initial uh, trials are very, very uh, suggested that combination of oncolytic viruses with uh, immunotherapy it could be uh, uh, better than either one alone. But uh, recently there was the study called the master key study that unfortunately did not show that there was an advantage in combining. But again, there are different types of oncolytic viruses, different types of immunotherapy. So the concept uh, is still being tested uh, in other trials. 
Another thing that uh, has been tried recently is combination of immunotherapies with interleukin-2. Now, interleukin-2 is a treatment uh, that needs to be given in the hospital, uh, and, and it's pretty intense. However, there are you know, changes in the interleukin-2 molecule that allow that uh, interleukin-2 uh, to be given uh, as an outpatient with a very limited uh, side effect severity. And, and these combinations, this is one of the combinations that has shown very high complete response rates uh, and very high total response rates. So is, this is also being tested uh, in a trial that is using nivolumab alone or nivolumab plus this new drug uh, that is a modified IL-2 molecule. And then there's this whole area of epigenetic therapies of cancer. What does that mean? Epigenetic means that you change either the DNA itself uh, or some of the DNA uh, um, uh, frame uh, components uh, to change the way that genes are expressed, uh, particularly immune genes. So there are certain tumors uh, in which you can um, inhibit uh, this process called methylation or inhibit uh, this enzyme called a deacetylate a histone, histone deacetylases. Uh, and when that happens, the immune cells become activated. You change the immune environment uh, in the tumor cells. And, and here is an example of that. This is a trial of immunotherapy in patients that had already progressed on immunotherapy. In this case, the drug was pembrolizumab. And um, uh, when these patients progressed on pembrolizumab, they were given this drug called antinostat, which is one of these drugs that affects uh, the epigenetics uh, of the tumors. And they actually saw 20% of these patients um, responding uh, to this treatment. So this trial is still in progress and this uh, may be uh, one treatment that uh, could be used in the future uh, for patients that have uh, not responded or progressed through immunotherapy. Um, uh, this is another um, uh, new treatment. It was recently published uh, data on uh, tumor infiltrating lymphocytes. So tumor infiltrating lymphocytes are T cells that are taken from the tumor, grown outside the body, and then given back to the patient uh, to treat patients that have progressed. Usually patients that have progressed on all uh, uh, type of effective uh, known treatments. And this is uh, it's not a new concept, but what is new is the idea that this is now available or will be available to um, most patients. Before it was only based in a few centers in the country, very selective, very difficult to get to those uh, trials. Um, this drug, Lithelucel, is a tumor infiltrating lymphocyte process. So the way it goes, is um, a tumor is taken out of the body by surgery. Um, uh, a patient then, patient, and this tumor is grown uh, in, in a laboratory facility. It's purified, it's activated, and it's sent back to the center uh, in a frozen form. In the meantime, the patient gets what we call lymphodepletion, which is chemotherapy to knock out all the bad T cells the TIL uh, cells are infused, and then patient needs to have a limited number of interleukin-2 uh, infusions to activate these T cells, and then eventually patient is discharged. This is not a picnic, it's a tough treatment. Uh, only, but this trial that was only for patients who had progressed on every known effective therapy showed a response rate of 36%. Um, 36%, and these responses were durable. Uh, the median duration of these responses was not reached, uh, and uh, um, uh, most patients uh, survived uh, over one year after this treatment. So this is exciting news. Uh, this graph looks at the toxicity. As I said, it's not a picnic. Initially, it's very toxic, but once you go through it, uh, then uh, toxicity becomes less of an issue. 
So we'll see, it is possible this will become widely available in 2022. Finally, I just wanted to touch on uveal melanoma. I don't know how much uh, the audience knows about uveal melanoma. Uh, is melanoma that starts in these different areas of the eye. Uh, it's uh, very different from the melanoma that starts on the skin or in the mucosa, uh, particularly because when you look at these are survival curves, their survival curves are nowhere what the survival curves for cutaneous melanoma look like that I showed you before. Many things don't work for this disease, but the reason why I wanted to bring this up is that um, uh, in the recent AACR meeting, which is the American Association for Cancer Research, uh, the results of this clinical trial with this new drug, uh, which is a T cell redirector called IMCGP100, uh, uh, was uh, was positive. So uh, they took patients that had this metastatic uveal melanoma and randomized them to receive the new drug or investigator choice of standard of care treatments, including chemotherapy and immunotherapy. Um, one caveat here is in order for this drug to work, patients have to have a special type of immune system called HLA A2 or 1, which is prevalent in about 40% of the general population. Bottom line is there was an improvement in survival, which is the first time ever that any drug uh, is shown to do that in uveal melanoma. Um, and it increased median uh, survival from 16 months to 22 months. Uh, and these are the survival curves. So this is definitely progress. I'm sure this drug uh, will be combined with other drugs and, and we're gonna see more progress uh, in this field. Um, this drug is likely going to be approved by the end of the year. And there are expanded access protocols now for patients that need that drug before it gets approved. So there are other approaches in the treatment of patients that are progressing on standard treatments or in combination with standard treatments. Uh, uh, we try to modify the cells around the tumor that may be suppressing the immune response. Uh, we're trying to uh, mess with the metabolism of the tumor to see if we can kill tumors that way. And um, as was mentioned before, changing the uh, microbiome of the gut seems to have a major effect also in how our bodies respond, particularly to immunotherapy. And um, let's see, I might have gone a little bit over also, and I'll stop here. Thank you very much.